Oh. I don't know what just happened. It just said live video ended and we just started the video. It has been a tough session. Technology is showing us Pepe. Networks in Nigeria showing us Pepe. Hey, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hey. Okay. So you were saying, they're talking about your journey. I asked you if coming into the industry, if you were abused or experienced any form of harassment. No, nothing, nothing like that, you know, nothing like that. Like I said, before I came into the industry, I was already working at NBC in the laboratory. Thank you, Beverly, finally. Yeah, so I was already working uh, in NBC, Nigerian Bottling Company. I also worked at the um, trade fair. I was one of the girls that was selling cars at the motor fair, you know. So I was doing a lot of stuff. So when I came in, I came in with inquisitive nature of wanting to find out what the industry was about. And I got my first lead role. And from then on, it was just rolled out. So there was no chance for anybody to come up to me and say, oh, you have to do this for you to get that. Or you have to come and see me for you to get this role. Because it never happened from day one. So there was no need for anyone to, I mean, you can't come now. It's just a bit too late. But I hear... I hear a lot of girls complaining. Some reach out to me. And I remember one incident. Can you hear me, Lala? I can. I can hear you. This very pretty girl. We we were in a video, a musical video for Uncle Taddy. And I was shooting a movie then. And she said, oh, Auntie Kate, I want to be in the movie. So I spoke to the producer. I said, oh, there's a girl I want you to look at. It. I mean, if she's right for the role. We still have a few bits and piece roles that need to be filled. If you think she's okay, please give her the role. So he said, oh, call her. So I called her and she came and I said, this is the producer. I talk with him. He'll give you a script. If you're okay for it, he'll give you the role. If not, really, this is just me giving you the opportunity. And I went back on set. Then she comes back to me in the evening and says that, oh, uh, she won't be coming back. And that um, the guy said she should come and meet her in the hotel. I'm like, excuse me, which hotel where? I said, hold that thought. I said, I'll call you later. So I went straight to the guy. You know me. No I time. I, I went to the guy. I said, hello, Mr. Man. I brought somebody for you to look at to see if you fit in. You're telling her to meet you in the hotel. Hotel for what? What's she meeting you in the hotel for? For what? Ah, uh, you know, now Mama Kate. I said, no, 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 no. You don't do that Mama Kate with me. I'll, I'll bring somebody here. It's not for you to do anything funny. So I called the guy. I said, don't come on this set again. If I find someone else for you, I will let you know. I said, don't don't try it with anyone that I do. That's wrong. Now, what do, you, what do you want to do with the If she's okay for the role, give her the role. If she's not, let her go. What are you calling her in the hotel room for? Are you not married? He just shrugged and then, but I called him out straight. I don't have time. We have yeah. to know where we stand from the beginning. Yeah. Now, real hotel, California. That's because of who you are and your personality. You don't take rubbish. You don't take no. sense. And you let everybody know. But the unfortunate thing is that not everybody is like you. So beyond uh, even what happens in society, you find that even sometimes in the industry environment, it doesn't feel safe because there are also enablers in addition to the in addition to the abusers. And I think that I mean it's great. I mean I know lots of the stories from your generation, but that's not the reality of this generation. And obviously with the people coming after after me. Because yeah. it is now the order of the day. It's almost like everybody wants to have a piece of the pie. It's almost like you enter the industry and they believe that this is what you do. I'm going to ask you another question. Do you think that a lot of the senior actors, female actors, have not shared enough of their journey with the younger ones so that they know that there is a way to get in the your way. Because that's what they told, that's what they believe. Yes. Oh, oh, someone has, someone has come to me and said to me that some producers said that, oh, people like Kate, Genevieve, Rita, all of them, we all did something with them. That's why they are at the top. I'm like, who is that person? I need the name and the number of that person. Exactly. Who is that person? I need you to call out the person. Then they 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 carry the stories on to these younger um, colleagues, and those ones feel as if they have to put out 
something for them to be able to get a role. No, because trust me, you put out once, you put out always. Yes. You put out once, you put out all. And let me say this, without any fear or favor, we have some of our females who put themselves in that position for the man to want to want to take advantage of you. And in, in doing that, you're making it difficult for other people who are genuine to be taken advantage of. I'm sorry, this is the truth out there. They come and say, oh, I'll do anything. Don't worry, I'll sleep with you. I'll become your girl. And then all the roles go to them. I'm sorry, Lala. This is the truth. We have to say it as it is. But do you also we have think to. that those women have gotten to that point because they felt like they didn't have another choice? Because they were told, <laughs> like you rightly said, they were told that this is what the people before you did. This is the baptism of fire and the right passage. So the women already going with the mind that they will just make their hearts strong. That this thing, I have to do it. Once I do it, I will, I will be the star. Once I do it, I will go. Do you think that well, already has happened? You, do I think what? Do you think that some of the women, based on the impression that it is the only way to get a role, do you think that they go in knowing that they, because they don't know the truth? Right? They believe they've been told these directors tell them that potential did it. This person did it. That person did it. And there's nobody to correct that impression. So they just believe because we True. Don't, maybe we might don't talk to each other. They just yeah. they tell themselves that this is the sacrifice I must sacrifice. And then they are ready. But the person in authority as well sees free Christmas and takes advantage. Yes. Okay. No. So True. Yeah, this is why I also think that we need to educate even the women and the men. They need to know yes. that there is you can succeed without sleeping with anybody. They need to know. But you also, you, you also have to understand, you have to also understand that in this industry, you and I know as females, um, we're not um, very supportive of each other. Not many. We have our tribe. And I'm speaking without fear or favor. Everybody has their tribe. Then there's this fear that, oh, the younger ones are going to come and take your role, come and take your place. You'll be relegated to the background. No, the sky is big enough for everyone. If God called you with that gift, there's room for you to thrive in this same industry. The sky is so big. We need to, as females, bandy together because the men don't have these issues. They don't have these issues. We need the females. We need to take a lot of ourselves, our younger selves, under our wing. And that's why there are some females. That if they come to me, money or no money, you don't, I, will, I will do it for you because I see your potential. I see that you're willing to work for it. But there are some people that they just feel it should be handed to them on a platter of gold. No, you have to work for it. Now, if you get it on your back, how long are you going to stay on your back? Are you going to last on your back 30 years, 40 years? You're not. You are not. So yeah. it also is on us, us, the seniors, or Auntie Joke them. You, you, you know, band, form a relationship. Don't see them as your, your enemy. Nobody is even your mate. If we have to put hierarchy inside this thing, just yeah. find somebody you can hang with and then grow with them. Grow with them. Let them let them tell, show you how it is. Let them encourage you. Work for it. Don't just come and lie on your back. For how long are you going to do that? By the time everybody has had their way, you're not, your talent is not even going to be. And he, he's not even going to be considered anymore. It's like, ah, just take her, give her, give her the rule. She'll just sleep with you and then you pass her around. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah. And I feel like even the, the, the women also, the younger ones or whoever is being abused, they need to know that they can find safety with the senior ones. They need to yes. know that they wouldn't be stigmatized or ostracized. That when you yes. come, like that girl now that came to you, you defended her. You went I did. Man and you, you corrected him. You didn't say, are you sure you, so you did not try something? Because that's what some people are afraid of as well. Yes. We also need yes. to position ourselves and let people know that we are safe places. That they can yes. Because once you that, put yourself as a safe place, they will come. That we have a wrapper, and we call it wrapper. We wrapper ourselves, cover, cover all of us, cover the younger ones, give them that, you know, that support. It's very, very important. Because if you are in a place of authority, 
and you can sort of call the shots. You should be able to say, this is wrong. And if you're going this way with this younger actress, then I'm sorry, you and I are going to have a problem. Exactly. And nobody's going to take food from your mouth. You know me, me. It's God that put me inside his walk. So, <laughs> it's true, Lala. Yeah. And I, 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 I mean, we forget, we forget, we forget, we forget that we are human beings. We forget that we are strong. We forget that there were women before us in this nation who did so many things and we've just let things slide because, oh, religion, oh, society, let it not be, oh, you know? Yeah. And you yeah. know why I take on a lot of roles, even on stage and all of that, is to also continue that narrative that women are strong women yeah. are human beings that's basically it yeah right now now um um what are some of the immediate things that that you think that we can do um, well before you answer that question i also want to just highlight that yes nollywood is on the hot seat but i dare say that there's sexual and gender-based violence everywhere yes it's menace it's a menace in every industry. Somebody was like, if the bankers talk now, where will we go? If the marketers mm. speak up, if the doctors speak up, when mm. are they going to start their own? Mm. So, I mean, Nollywood is our constituency. So we are focused yes. on that. We have to protect it. Things, whilst we push for policy change, codes of conduct, and some of the other things that are beyond human beings, what are the immediate things you think we can do right now to start to sanitize, for lack of a better word, to start to push and kick against some gender-based violence in the industry? We have to be able to let everyone speak up. Hmm. We have to give them a voice. First and foremost, let them speak. Let them speak. Let them, let them not have that fear that if they talk, they will lose jobs. If they talk, they are not... Um, reliable and they are problematic. You know, they will just tag you. They will just put yes. tag on you just because you have spoken out. We need to let them know that your voice is valid. Mm. Your voice will be heard. And then we need to find a way to be able to investigate these claims. It's not enough that they speak. What happens to the person? Yeah. Are they going to be called into a panel? We need to discuss this thing. What really happened? Let yes. them know that these accusations are taken seriously. seriously. Not, oh, we're just talking. It's an industry thing. Let's keep it quiet. No, no, no. We're not keeping it quiet. It's exactly. quiet silence that got us to this place where we this are. Point. We need to speak. We need to speak. We need to let the voices be heard. Yes. We need to speak. And we need to take immediate action. And I keep on using this illustration. That if you have a child, a daughter, it hmm. tells you that maybe her teacher or somebody around you abused her or just maybe fondled her breast. You're not going to really ask for investigations. You're going to tell the person to step outside first. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You're going to disassociate. Now, you might hand the person over to the police. That's if you've not killed the person by yourself. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, you might hand the person over to the police or whatever, but your initial action will be to separate from the person and separate yes. the person from the accuser. Do you understand? Yes. So, and I yes. expect us to do that as well. That if somebody says something, maybe something happens on your set, I don't think the reaction should be let us investigate. The reaction should be okay, go so pack your load and go first. We're going to call the police. We're going to yes. do other things. But right now, step outside. Right now, yes. leave this association, leave this cast, leave this. Court, yes. Yes. Because we can't trust you. And then we yes. to do that in unanimously. It's going yes. to give people courage to say things. Then we need about we need the sex. We need the, the, the critical number. You know, people are very selfish. Lala, you know our industry. Yes, Everybody's yes, thinking yes. of their pockets. How many people are going to join with you and say, That's Oh, it. we're not working, we're not working anymore until this matter is sorted? Yes. How many will say, I'm going to sit back? until this matter is sorted. This girl has complained. We have to sort it out. Yes. Because now, it's not just exactly. about money. It's about a life. How many are going to do it? That, and that's true. But that's the thing. We need to now gather. I think that all of these conversations we are having, I mean, you and I, we are like preaching to the choir. But I'm saying yeah. we need to 
gather more people to be on our side because yeah. if I'm on a set and I get something like that, I will put my foot down and say, "This you have done it for me before. You've done it. You've done it for me before many years ago." Where you, where you told a certain producer the yes. that if he doesn't get his back off my matter, you will not do the play again yourself and anti Reti Doyle. Yes. And I told him that if he does not stop, you are leaving the production. And I would have left you. You were strong and I was weak, but you stood for me and he backed off me and we continued yes. the production. So we need yes. more of that. Now, so now me, we now do. I am empowered. So I can do the same thing for somebody else coming. Yes. So we need to gather the numbers. We need to gather yes. the numbers. More we need a critical more. mass, a critical mass, a critical mass, a critical mass of people, of women who will stand for another. Those in the position where they can help stand for another. You are not going to be hungry if you stand for the truth. You are not going to be hungry. You are not. If you are really important to that job, then they will back off this lady that they are doing whatever it is. I mean, people are selfish. That's all I can say. Yeah. People think of their things too much. Now, yes. in, the, in the light of our current situation, where people have been accused, um, names are being called, and a lot of young actors, especially females, are, are messed up, are hurt, are angry. Hmm. I don't want to share, you know, details in my DMs, different things. I get reports every day. And yesterday, there was a lady who reached me for the first time. And she said, she said, like a woman to woman, do you think anything will happen? Do what this person did to me. This was yesterday. And I had to encourage her that at least articulate your thoughts and see what can be done. So what do you have to say to this current situation that we're facing? Ah, Lala, if I tell you I'm not tired, it's a lie. But I won't stop speaking. I mean, for me, I, I, if I'm on a set, I'm going to do my own little bit, asking each, all, each and every one of us to shine our light where we can in our own corner so that it will be brighter for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, we just need to have that place where we can go and report stuff. I mean, the police have put up a, a number to call. Is it something yeah. we can use in Hollywood? Is it something we can try, you know, to use? Because, I mean, we are Nigerian, so why not, why not try and go and make a complaint and let there be an investigation? Let there be an investigation. Let this person feel as if they are being yes. looked into. That yes. will send a message to others who cannot yes. package their packages yes. to stand back. Yes, we need to encourage people and help them get some level of justice. You know, even yes. if they from the police say you are here by someone, it will make a difference. It will make I am with a you. difference. Yeah, it will make a huge difference. A huge, huge difference. And huge. So I have another question for you. Why do you think that this, where do you think it came from? Because you don't have that, that history. I have experiences of sexual harassment, you know, and a lot of my own peers have. So what, where did it come from? Because when I hear the history of Nollywood, I don't hear it. Hmm. So when I came into from? all my time in the industry, I never, I mean, on, until maybe some years later that I started hearing of it. When we started, there was nothing like that. It was just, I guess... How do I say? Is it the, the economy? It's not the economy. I don't know. I think these predators have always been with us. They were just waiting for their time to, to strike unhinged and unheeded, you know, to be more blatant with the acts that they do. Maybe they tried it in a subtle way and people just let it slide. But now they are becoming more emboldened you know, to just do because they feel, oh, if I do this, she's going to be quiet. I can hold a sword over her and tell her if she doesn't sleep with me, she's not going to get a job. And also because of the need mm -hmm. of people to want to join this industry now, because back then, they don't want to join Nollywood. Yeah. We are dropouts. You just said you were begging people to come to Nollywood. We are dropouts. You never, your child inside Nollywood, eh, that's a failed industry. Now, everybody's coming inside it. So now, there's a larger pool for them to, you know, pick from. 
pick their victims from. So I think that's that's basically it. Not that they weren't there, they've been there, but they didn't have that opportunity as much as is now. They have now. Yes. Okay, so just to summarize this, I want you to um, say things to people who have been abused or harassed. What, what would you like to say to them? Hmm. What would you like to say to them? What should they do? And what would you like to say to them? I would say find a trustworthy confidence. Speak to someone you trust. It might be your peers, someone older who you trust, who you trust. And I want to believe that by the time you talk to that person, first and foremost, you will have that release that you have spoken. It's always good to speak, you know, just let it out first and foremost. And hopefully, hopefully, there will be some kind of respite for you. I, I mean, we need to find, I'm, like I'm still talking about this police number that was advertised. Maybe something we need to look at. Whoever has an issue should call that number. It doesn't mean it's not for Nollywood. It's for all Nigerian women. So I think it's something we should think of exploring. Don't feel that you are alone. Mm. If you've been harassed sexually, you've been touched, you know, they like to touch you. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Ah, you look nice. So this is your nyash, and then all That's those kind of things. Need to stop it. See your nyash. See, can, I see your it, breasts. It, it can't happen. Now this makeup acting. Eh, eh, eh. don't put your. It can't happen in a set where I am. So <laughs> I, I, it can't. It can't. So who are you talking to? And why are you talk? Why do you think you can talk to her like that? I want everyone who feels that they've been harassed in some way to be able to find somebody who you trust and speak to that person and that person will also speak to someone we need to we need to find a strong tribe that can take on this thing and say see if your matter enter this group you are finished yeah that's what we need to do because it's gone on for too long oh. and if we leave it alone it's going to get worse it's going to get worse and we are living in a patriarchal nation we need to remember that we need to remember that all the time. Yeah. But we also remember that there are strong women yes. in this industry yes. who don't take rubbish. Look for them. Identify them. There's Mildred. There's Blessing. There's you, Lala. There's me. There's Auntie Choke. There's Ego. There, I can count at least Auntie Taiwo. There, there, like, there will be like 20. Go and talk to them. Tell them how you feel. Tell them what happened. And they will speak for you. Even if to this man, come, somebody called your name and said you touched her. But why, why, what happened? Yes. Let there be questions and face that person. And if possible, we'll come out with a register of our own. Exactly. That was something I thought about. That where we have names that are in like yes. Hollywood register, that people know that if you yes. this one know, he has a history. The Nigerian legal yes. system may not have caught up with him. But yeah, he has, a, he has a history. So if you hire yes. him at your own peril, and then everybody will start retreating from that person. Yes, and that's, that's yes. good. That's good. Yes. So those are yes. things you need to do. And like you rightly said, if you've been harassed or abused or by anybody in the industry, first of all, you are not alone. Second, no. if there's nothing wrong with you. It was not your fault. You need to know that. Yes. Find it's nothing you did. Trust, yes. So yes. Enough is enough is what we are saying. So yes. Far and no more. We're taking our industry back. You know, in the industry is not for sexual predators. It is yes. possible to succeed without slipping your way to the top. So when they, yes. they tell you that, oh, you must do this, tell them no. Tell them to get out. Abuse them and curse them out. Don't yes. be afraid. You know, and I, I guess we'll keep enlightening people because. I, I will quickly share this story. Somebody told me a story this morning. This one was a male actor. A male actor from the East. He was in a film that was to be shot in Abuja. He gets to Abuja and the, the director, the whatever of the film, did not book a hotel room for him and said he must sleep in his room. Ah. He doesn't sleep in his room. No role for him tomorrow. He can be going back to from Abuja. Wait, who is I was told. Is he a female director? No, he was man to man. So, Jesus. So the the actor, the actor said.
said no, and he got on a bus that night, was able to find some money, and went back to the east. Now I said, Jesus. if it was a woman, chances Jesus. are she would have stayed. She might not have yes. had money to go back to the east. She yes. Would have been afraid to take that journey mm -hmm. at that time of the night. Jesus. But she would have stayed there without force, and that person would have abused her. And so you see that even in that case, when she tells the story, they'll say, Did you walk inside by yourself? Sure. But the, you can see the difference between when he was even presented to a man and presented to a woman. Yes. These are some of the gender. This is why we need to speak up for women because yes. that's when the woman is very, very helpless. Yes. And very. It needs to be like, so we need to circulate the emergency numbers. These three dial numbers, young female actor. If you're going to any process, have somebody's number on your phone ready yes. that you can call, that you can reach out to. Because I've called some names already. You can reach out to these people. Try and form a relation. I'm not saying be their best friend, but yes. someone who you can have their ear. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. Is there anything else you want to say, ma'am? We forget so readily how far we have come. Um, hmm, hmm. We forget our lineage, our history, our strength. Mm. We are told we are quiet, we are spineless, we cannot talk. We sit quiet, timid, docile, without a murmur, without a whimper. We accept the new role that society has foisted on us, religion. Have we never heard of a Fusheto and Iwura? Whom kings feared, more mm. Jaguaro, who went mm. where an army could not. We who are forebears mm. stood against the white colonialists during the race tax laws. Queen Amina of Zao Zao. These are mm. women way before our time. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Mm. Take back your power. Take, it Take back. back your power. And we're taking it back. Yeah. We're taking it back. We're taking it back. Thank you so much. Um, I see questions around um, uh, um, the names Get me. Mentioned. So I'm just going to have yes. you repeat the names you mentioned of female actors that other female actors can go to, can trust, can run to for help. I will have you repeat that. Yes, there are stories of men who have been abused as well. I want to say yes. that don't blend extreme masculinity kills you. Because mm. don't because of patriarchy as well, you are like mm. I don't want to speak up because they will say I'm a weak man. It does not mm. happen. That's extreme masculinity. That's toxic masculinity, and that's one of the mm. byproducts of patriarchy too. So even if, if you are a man and you've been abused, you can talk to us. We too. We will empathize with you if you don't have men that you can talk to. Mm. We will empathize. Mm. And we will try and push to the right organizations. There are many Judy! that you and I work with. Um, yes. There's Warif, there's Project Alert, there's yes. Stand to End. Mirab, there's Mirabel Center. Mirabel yes. Center. There's that many. Even Enough is Enough Nigeria. Yes. If people reach out to them. Somebody somewhere will do something. But please yes. don't be silent. So I'll just, yes. I'll just let you repeat the names of people you, 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 you are so, so safe heavens. So I said, uh, there are people like Mildred Okwo, there's Rita Dominic, there's uh, Blessing Egbe, there's Ego Boyo, there's Lala Akindoju, there's Kate Henshaw, there's Auntie Joker Silva. At least those names, those Hilda ones, Dokubo. I'm sure. Hilda Dokubo. I mean, you've had, you have nine names already. You know, just reach out to any of them. Reach out to any of them, even if it's just to talk. Even if it's just to talk, I will take it from there. Project Alert on Violence Against Women and Children, Women at Risk Foundation, you have Mirabel Center, you also have the Lagos State Domestic um, uh, Violence uh, Response Team. Use it. You are a Lagosian if you are in Lagos. Use it. Let's yeah. see how it goes. Yeah. You, you can never go wrong for trying. Yes. Yeah. Try. Thank you very much, sis. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I hope you've learned something. Um, yeah. Let's walk you back today. Thank you, Beverly. Thank you, Judy. Beverly, you, you rock. Kemi you rock. You rock. You rock. You guys were here. Thank you so much.
um thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you enough is enough for all that you do yes a voice and a platform and we keep we keep pushing the silence is over enough is enough we're taking the industry speak. back speak. Speak. You speak up okay i'm back and i hope i'm not frozen Hi everyone. I hope I'm not frozen. Okay, let's hope it stays like this. Great. Thank you guys for coming back. Thank you for coming back. We're just um I'm, whilst I'm waiting for Auntie Hilda to come back on, who she was just explaining the different ways that women can be harassed, women can be abused, and women can be taken advantage of. This is also to kill the um, impression that the only way women are abused is when they are raped. So Auntie Hilda was highlighting um, coercion, for example, when you get consent and you coerce the person, when you are in a higher position of authority, when you have power over the person, when you have economic strength over a person and you ask them to do something um, in exchange for what you can give them, even if they don't say no, you are taking them for granted. You are abusing them. You are taking um, advantage of their rights to say yes and their rights to choice because in that moment, they feel disadvantaged. In that moment, they feel like they don't have options. And then that person has been abused or taken advantage of. And so in light of the recent happenings around the world, all the cases of gender-based violence, all the cases of rape, all the cases, you know, with everybody speaking up, and trying to put pressure on our government and our law enforcement agencies to do better, to protect people. Um, then, you know, sometime last week, um, names started dropping from Nollywood ab on, about sexual abuse and sexual harassment. Hence this conversation. Hence the need to discuss it and know what we should do. Sexual abuse, as sexual exploitation and abuse, C. Thank you very much for that. I'm still waiting for Auntie Hilda um, to join us so that we can continue um, the conversation with her. I'm going to just call her phone. Um, so, yeah. So I'm stalling for her, but um, now is the time that everyone is speaking up. Hello, Auntie. We're waiting for you to join us. I'm waiting for you Oh, we're back on. We're back on. Join the video and send a request. Okay, she's coming. Okay, I, I see her now. Right, Auntie. I have accepted her request. Yes, I've seen her. And it's okay if you, you, um, if you guys out there have questions you'd like us to answer or something to talk on, please feel free to write it and I'll find a way for us to talk about it in the time that we have. As we know, Enough is Enough Nigeria is a platform that speaks up against social injustice, exercises the office of the citizen, and um, great. Okay. Back. Welcome back. Yeah, and I'm not frozen anymore. So I was saying to your point and say that um, highlighting on you know sexual exploitation and abuse and the different things that are that are happening right now and people just understanding that it is not only when you rape a person by that um, penetrate them sexually that you are abusing them. You can coerce them. You can pass snide remarks. You can call them names. You can cut call objectifying all these things are wrong now let's let's bring it home to nollywood now like i said when i was starting out that it looks like a sleeping dog was a dog has been sleeping and it has been woken up this sleeping dog you, you know the, the thing is everybody says oh yes it's long overdue why do you think we have been quiet for so long and you are a veteran you've been around for a very long time <laughs> why do you think we have been quiet why do you think we're just getting to it now social status people are afraid um to speak up because they don't want to um be stigmatized they don't want to 
um, uh, be removed, be discriminated against. Um, they don't want to suffer the pain of people tagging them um, with names. Like, you know, in Nollywood, they say they blacklisted you, which means nobody gives you any job anymore and all of that. So the social status, protect, protecting social status and cultural expectations for women, um, religious beliefs, especially if you're one of those people who um, worship in places where they tell you women women should be should have now auntie hilda is pro please but can you hear me though can anyone hear me no now you're back you're back you're back you're back you're okay back. great okay so so um so in the past People out of respect, you not not respect, fear, fear of um, discrimination, of um, stigmatization, okay. of being called okay. names, of being removed, ec economic uh, uh, um, pressures on them, and all of that. That's why people have been quiet all this time. Everybody wanting to look proper, and, and so they're dying silently and saying nothing and saying, oh. Um, I, I, I had to be quiet because if I did this as it's in Hollywood, I would be blacklisted. It is that fear of being blacklisted that is the trouble. That's the trouble. Social status. That's why people were not speaking. Up. you are actually committing a crime. That's violence against women. That's what you are doing. You are committing a crime. So maybe we need to keep ringing that bell. When you manipulate somebody, when you deceive the person by continuous verbal, uh, uh, um, what do you call it now, pressurizing the person, when you use any kind of force on anybody, to get a yes or a maybe, you are actually committing a crime. Rape is a part of abuse. It is not um, the only one. Is, is not the only one. It's not a standalone giant. Okay. So if you threaten somebody's um, job and how the person makes money, that's economic abuse. That's what you're doing. You are you are economically ab abusing that abusing person. Them. Yes, if if, All right. if you if you make it impossible for the person to come out um, to social functions, you're you're abusing the person's um, social, uh, social privileges. So maybe people need to understand that. Right now, Auntie, I have a direct question for you. And in your yes. journey, I know your in your journey from where you started, have you experienced any form of sexual abuse or harassment in Hollywood as an actress? Personally, no. Plus, you know, when we first started, nobody had anything that anybody was going to use to pressurize you. We were all <laughs> starting. We were all young people, fresh from the university. The older ones were already on television. They were already stars on television. We came fresh from uni. Young people in the 2018, maybe the old, oldest person amongst us would have probably been 25 at the time. So we all came very young and very fresh. And nobody had anything anyway. Nobody. So what were you going to entice anybody with? Wait. Most of the jobs we did when we first started, who paid who? There was no money to pay anybody. But as we went on by the third, fourth, thereabout production, money began to come in. And even at that time, everyone was still struggling to set up their businesses to have names. So the people who had those kind of names had them maybe on television, but not obviously not in um, home video as we were called then. And most of them who crossed from television to home video also didn't have those privileges. I was one of the rich people who came in rich because I was already riding a car by the time I was in the university and I was a teenager riding a car because oh, I was wow. very enterprising. Yes, I was a teenager driving a car. So most people who knew me in Uniport knew that this small girl had a car because I was doing business. I was, I was working 
three jobs. I was a TV presenter. I was dancing on stage. I had a radio program, but I was a bloody teenager. So I, I came in with not, not like a huge car. It was a small Tokumbo I was riding, but it was the only car, as a matter of fact, in the industry at the time. So mm. nobody had that opportunity. But as the business grew and people began to make money, pressures came in. And then a lot of young people we used to go to at that time to plead with, to please come and join us in Hollywood, who said no, now found the industry interesting. It was the, 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 the uh, beauty that we had built, the status that we had built around Hollywood that attracted a lot of people. And a lot of young people also became slightly desperate and wanted to be part of it and then you know people just found a window to begin to abuse people i've never been abused i've never bought god help anybody who tries it the person will understand what it means to be an angry woman <laughs> I, I i'm certain that you in particular cannot be abused <laughs> anymore or harassed because of what you have built for yourself because you find that sexual predators go for people who are in weaker positions or people who want something that they have so you have True. now said, one, one, something you've highla highlighted now is that the success of people as they grew in the industry, the, um, the, the power that they had was one of the, is one of the things that started getting them power drunk and feeling like they could oppress people. And just, but do you think that they always had it in them? And so it was just an opportunity came, you know, because... There are people who, as well, have never abused or harassed anybody, even after being successful. <laughs> you know, you know. For me, I believe that a sick person is a sick person. He's just mm. a time bomb waiting to explode. So, mm. some of these abusers have always been abusers, except that we didn't find them out. Exactly. Or maybe they were abusing people that were not within our radar. So we mm -hmm. didn't notice, so, okay? It's because they have entered our square now that we, we are beginning to see that it is a problem. I remember when Claron Chukura um, started shouting about abuses, abuses. At that time, I was already serving in River State and she would call me on phone and say, Hilda, you won't say anything. I said, but Claron, I can't say or do anything from Port Harcourt except you send me proof. If you mm. send me proof, then I can do something. Can do something. And, and the only proof I wanted wasn't because it's always very difficult to prove cases of abuse. The only proof I wanted was one person to say, this happened to me. I don't have to prove it. You saying it is enough proof we will take up that fight. But there was mm. nobody, right? So Claron at that point was a lone voice shouting in the wilderness because nobody else was saying anything. In fact, some people just thought, why is she making noise? Maybe because they're not giving her any job. They mm. also didn't know that Claron at the time was also creating another career path for herself. They didn't know that. You know, hmm. when you get to a certain level in this business, you will find out that there are several other things that you can do with the goodwill that you generate doing this business. Okay, so I think sincerely that anybody who is a predator is what he is. Anybody who is, a, is an abuser of the genders or anybody, if that is who he is, he's just showing himself right now. He didn't just learn it yesterday. He's a okay. sick mind. And if, and if I'm hearing you clearly, I'm hearing things around the culture of silence in the country or in our society, not necessarily in Nollywood as it were. Culture of silence, ignorance, patriarchy. I definitely believe the patriarchy is part of it because um, a good part of, a good portion of men be, are raised to think that they have rights to women's bodies. Mm. You know, once you, you, you are going to enjoy it, you should be pleased yeah. that I'm touching you or something, mm. and they find it difficult that a woman actually doesn't want to be with them, doesn't find them attractive, doesn't want that, mm. those sexual favors and all of that. Okay, I'm going to ask you one more question before I let you go. Um, okay. And I'll move on to my next guest. In, with respect to Nollywood in particular, yeah. what do you think? Now, many cases, many cases have come up, right? Mm -hmm. Or a few cases have come up. <laughs> Names have been called and female actors have pointed fingers and are calling people out both in secret and in private because you know that they are more in secret, more in secret than mm -hmm. public, actually. Uh -huh. Now, 
And many of these people have no hope. They just feel like, oh, nothing is going to happen. Um, these people are going to continue and they are going to get away with it. What do you have to say to that with respect to Nollywood? Nobody will get away with it. And God help them if we find one person who is willing to run the whole nine miles with us. You see, um, if, if somebody is not used to set a clear example, others won't learn. Yes. We have them everywhere, right? We have abusers everywhere. But because our business is a peculiar one, where we are society's mirror, and where people use us as yardsticks um, and mentors and all of that, we cannot afford that image. It's too expensive an image. And if anyone thinks this is just going to be another noise-making um, process, then the person, is, it, it, the person is a joker. It means the person does not even understand the times and seasons that we're in, right? Um, we are in that time when uh, nobody can be quiet anymore. Mm. However, we have also... Um, been able to identify that some people might just, some people and, and you see they weaken the cases of others. Some people might just want to take vendetta on an innocent person because of, you know, a long time kind of grudge or something but that's, they are not, they are the least of our worries right now. Our, our main focus and concern is to ensure that this industry is not messed up by a group of sick minds who cannot um, identify that they are sick and go and get help. So our business is to focus on those who are already in pain to help them get through this period, help them return back, you know, to, um, to being who they were before they were cowered into the, the space that they are in now where they are afraid of their tomorrow and all of that. So we have to stop that. We have to stop the stigmatization. We have to encourage people to speak up. We have to also um, hold people culpable for their offenses if there are any. And, um, you know, we just need to sanitize it. For me, I think that putting together a code of conduct for our practice is now top of the parity. We must have that set. We must. So everyone gets to understand what violence against women, gender-based violence is, and why they cannot do it. Gender-based violence is a global problem, and it is in our industry. We have to handle it, and we have to win. We have to win. I think you couldn't have ended your session any better. We have to win, but I must say that the winning is, is dependent on all of us. We all have to do our quota, encourage people. Um, and just like you said, you, in fact, you were in my mind because you, you, like you spoke to survivors who might be on this call right now. So you said they should speak up. They should seek help. They should call people out if they need to, if they want to. And the abusers should be aware because there's no more business as usual. Simple. Simple. Right. Thank, right. you so Thank you so much, so much Anna, for having me. We continue the fight.